Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Zakhlah khair for coming to another session of 99 Names. And uh, today, alhamdulillah, we are going through uh, our 18th day. So it's been quite a trip, alhamdulillah, but we'll be, we're, we're, we're moving along. So we've crossed the halfway mark as, we've go, uh, as we're going towards the 99 names and covering these all. So inshallah, uh, let us go ahead and begin here. So just a moment, please. Bismillah. So last time we covered the names of al baith Al-Shaheed, and Al-Haq. And these names we mentioned that al baith was the one who awakens, the one who resurrects. And Al-Shaheed was the witness and Al-Haq was the truth. That al baith was not just the literal awakener and al shaheed is not just the literal witnessing or al haq is just not that literal aspect, just not just those things. But each of these things within us, we have a spiritual dimension. Our, our spiritual selves are awakened. Our, uh, our own personal capacities to witness our environments are lifted up. And our, our ability to see that there's no truth but Allah is lifted up. And so we take these names as such that they have this definite meaning, but they also have the internal, the, the, the beyond the literal, the metaphorical aspect. So we take these as we go forward, inshallah. And so uh, as we uh, look before we start the Asma'il Husna, we look at the names that we have for today. We have Al-Wakil. Al-Wakil, we have Al-Qawi, and we have Al-Mateen. Uh, Al-Wakil can be translated as the trustee, the disposer of affairs, the one who has been authorized and never deserts. And in Al-Qawi, we have the mighty, the strong, the intense, and the energetic. And Al-Mateen, we have the firm, the steadfast, and the unshakable. And so we'll cover these names, inshallah, after a recitation of the Asma'il Husna. So I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. Let me go ahead and pull this up. And remember, as we are reciting the 99 names here too, as you're comfortable, center yourselves in a way if you have to close your eyes. Hopefully you don't fall asleep when you close your eyes, but you have to close your eyes. Whatever you need to do just to be aware of the divine presence, just to be mindful of the divine presence. And we keep the names that we talked about last time in our mind as we recite these names, that what we are reciting is our names that awaken us, that help us wake up, not just literally, but wake up in a transformative sense. We witness to these names. We witness to these names because Allah is the witness. Allah teaches us how witnessing can truly impact and transform us. And we recognize above all, these are the truth. This is the truth. Allah is the truth. So with that being said, let us go ahead and let me share my screen here. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah, الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتاح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد 
الحق الوقيل القاوي المتين الولي الحميد المهسي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصامد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعلي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع نور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So with these beautiful divine names we begin inshallah with our uh, discussion today as i mentioned the names of al-wakil al-qawi and al-mateen al-wakil we mentioned is the known as the trustee the disposer of affairs the protector and the one who has been authorized and the one who not just has been authorized or deputized but the one who never deserts so the one who takes care of us the one who creates certainty and it comes from this root of entrusting it comes from this root of assigning commissioning putting somebody in charge authorizing empowering appointing someone as a representative uh, or an agent and to invest somebody with full power to invest them not just with power but full trust with reliance dependence we have a similar root for words and uh, professions and occupations like lawyers attorneys that they it, it, you, it requires a uh, an invest investment and requires a trust that this person will carry out something on your behalf or this person will defend you this person will do all these things and be a representative be an agent for you and al wakil transforms really our personal storms that we might be going through those storms of worries the storm, storms of sorrow the storms of just being dejected into a uh, really nice wind of confidence it helps just uh, when we when we feel helpless al wakil is the one that helps kind of come out and shake out those 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 uh those thoughts that we might have and say no you know you there is someone there is something and there is an entity beyond this that you can dispose your affairs to and so it helps us practically think about finding solutions rather than just going into ceaseless thinking and just being in 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 a cycle with regards to like I I can't I don't there's no outlet to this and sometimes we we oftentimes feel pushed to the margins of society especially the most marginalized amongst us that there is nowhere else to go and al wakil helps us to remember that at the end of the day the one whom we can put our trust in the one whom we can give a sign as our representative the one who's there rooting for us who has been our pro bono lawyer for the beginning of time here is uh al wakil is a law and we abandon ourselves without hesitation to Allah when this name causes us to abandon ourselves in the sense not like we just leave ourselves and go but in a sense that we, th- those those thoughts those sentiments really help us uh get uh get get uh ready for and get get prepared for putting our trust in Allah and we know that then in our hearts that Allah is the one who knows best and with whom we trust and whom we dispose our affairs to al wakil also is that aspect of us admitting consciously then to Allah's full power and to be free to let these things happen and to be free to have that trust we it takes some time to let go it's hard to let go it's hard to put our things in the in, in, in into someone else's care uh we the, like, many of these things are because they they matter to us it's it's very hard to turn these things over especially if there's some uncertainty to it al wakil helps us to establish that certainty that there is a god on the other side of this there is someone who is that disposer of affairs but also al wakil is not just stating that yes i understand that all power is in allah's hands and 
great. That's I, I understand that. But al wakil is to consciously then invoke Allah's help. It's to be cognizant that Allah exists and that Allah functions in this role. So it's not just that statement of faith. It's not just that statement of understanding. It is part and parcel that statement of consciousness, that feeling of consciousness that in your heart you you know that Allah knows best and that Allah will be there. So al wakil is the one in whom we then can put our trust in unreservedly, unabashedly, and without any fear, without any fear, without any type of uh, any type of strings attached. And so al wakil grants us that capacity to take all things and all possibilities that come to us in an open and flexible way without getting restless or lacking enthusiasm because we know how Allah operates with us. We know how Allah operates in a caring capacity, a protective capacity, but also in an advising and in, in another capacity as our agent, as our um, confidant, as someone that is there on our team rooting for us, that will stand uh, for us in, 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 in the trial of life and will testify, who will testify uh, not just for us, but will help uplift us and help grant us that security. And so this knowledge, this uh, knowledge with Al-Wakil, this confidence, it really makes room in our hearts for transformation. We talk about this recurring each and every name that has come about here. We talk about how these names and going through these names, they, our purpose here is not just to bring about a, a sort of healing, but it's also to bring about a sense of transformation. And especially in Ramadan, the one thing we're, we're trying to do above above everything else, you know, we, we can we can go through as many fasts as we want. We can go through as many raka or any, uh, you know, just how many juz we can go through. We can do all that. But how many do how many of us truly transform? How many of us truly experience transformation? And so uh, when we become confident confident in terms of recognizing that we have a trusted relationship with Allah and make that space in our heart, taking out the doubt and putting in that room for faith, we know there that there is uh, a chance for true transformation. And it gives us that strength. Al-Waqil gives us that strength to accept life, to accept life when it is easy, when it is difficult, and to transform that despair into confidence, but to also know we can, we don't have to rest uh, too easy in the sense that we we also can be active in the sense we can hey, have someone that we can dispose our affairs to, but we can still be going along. So some of us may be passionate in our life in terms of going at 100 miles per hour doing what we love, or whatever it may be. Same thing with regards to when life is difficult, we obviously want to keep pushing, but to know that, hey, there's there's someone on the on, on our side as well. And so people who experience this quality, people who take on this quality, don't exclusively view their mistakes and their shortcomings as a punishment. Like sometimes we say anything that happens, any bad thing that happens to us, this is from this is a punishment from Allah. Allah's punishing me, Allah's punishing me, Allah's punishing me. You know, you might just have the worst day in your life and you're just like, Allah hates me. So it's a punishment. They instead lift up a trust in Allah, lifting up a trust in Allah and knowing that what bad might come is only to really make space for, uh, for, for good, for improvement, that, that, uh, that they have that trust in Allah that whatever is to come, even if it is something that is negative, uh, that the Quran assures us that surely with hardship comes ease and that verily what uh, comes for you after is better than what came for you before. And so it lifts up that there is hope it instills that sense of hope that this isn't the end of the picture. This isn't all that there is to it, to this movie. There is much more that's there. And so you go off of that true uh, tawakkul. You go off of that true trust in Allah, that, that submissive trust. It's built off of that, not just in a sense that uh, I trust Allah is going to do everything and go. We already talked about how al-wakil is not just that statement. Al-wakil is actually believing that and incorporating that in your heart. And so when you do this with this name, you start to see that you really do make space uh, and you raise your own self-esteem. And so if we trust Allah, we trust that Allah is looking out for us. There's the famous hadith of the tying your camel, that, that uh, a, a Bedouin came to the mosque and uh, was running late for prayer, you know, put his camel to the side and ran to catch up with the prayer, uh, did his prayer. And then when he got up, he looked back, the camel wasn't there. And so he, he went to uh, the prophet and he started complaining. He was like, you know, wasn't Allah watching like my camel? I came, I did prayer. I'm doing all this stuff. What's happening? He was like, tie your camel first and then uh, trust Allah to take care of the rest. And so for us, it tells us that this, this, uh, this, attribute does require us 
to take some kind of action. We do have to have our own self agency. We do need to take some action. We can't just, you know, just sit in our apartments all day or sit in our homes all day and just be like, well, you know, I'm not going to work today. I'm not going to do anything today. Uh, Allah will pay the rent. And then you get slapped with an eviction notice on your door. You'd be like, well, I trusted in Allah. Why did Allah not, you know, take off the uh, eviction notice? Um, you, you have an element to play. That's your, your purpose of creation to be an agent, an active agent in this world. But because of how much we take on, because of how much we participate in this world, we understand that uh, as uh, in our in our faith, that Allah is also looking out for us, that Allah is there and has our back. So we, we trust Allah, but in trusting Allah as well, we understand we have been given a responsibility. We have been provided with a uh, agency to do this and we should do this. And so lastly, this, this name frees us then of that illusion that we've been forgotten by Allah, that Allah just created us and then just disappeared or Allah created us and doesn't know what Allah created. And you just have this aspect. No, it, it tells us that Allah is there. Allah is there as close uh, as our jugular vein, but as close as a protecting associate, as close as someone whom we can tell our secrets to, who we can be very, very straightforward with, who we can be very candid with. And so when we think about tying our camel and trusting Allah, we know that this is a two-part relationship. We know that this, in order to uh, to take on this trust, in order to fully uh, rely on this trust, we have to do a little bit as well on our end. So we set, in, in this sense, we clear our hearts, we make ourselves intentional, we make ourselves intentional in everything that we do, and then we put our trust in Allah throughout that Allah will help provide here, but we have to do our part as well. So inshallah, we move into the next name, Al-Qawi. Al-Qawi is the mighty, the strong, the intense, the energetic, a lot of feelings of power, a lot of feelings of energy and might coming from this name. It, this this uh, name is one of those names of Allah that really gives us a feeling of how small, not just we are, but how small the universe as a whole is to Allah. You probably see these uh, documentaries about space and they just, or, or like these, uh, these short videos on social media where it's like, hey, this is the earth and then this is this. And then here's like, here's Betelgeuse. Here's like our sun. Here's like all this stuff. Here's Andromeda. Like here's all these different things. Uh, and so you see just like really how minuscule, not just we are, but how the universe and how so many different things, it's so expansive. But then as you start to space out, as you start to space out, you, you, you can see how, how, how much bigger something is in relation to that. And then you think about Allah. You think about the one who created all this. You think about the one who put this all together. And you really then stand in awe. We get, we get in awe and we should get in awe when we see just how, how small we are compared to other creation that's out there beyond our world, beyond our galaxy, beyond our solar system and beyond all this. We, we, we see just... How, how much is that then to Allah? If this is the universe, if this is the creation, this expansive universe, this expanding universe, how much more is Allah? At the root of everything then is Allah alone and the source of it all. So we see from all of this that it all came from a singular source. So when we look at it, we might feel really small. We might feel really small. We might feel really insignificant. And we might feel how small not just we are, but the whole universe is. But that smallness gives us that feeling that we're still that connected. When you're that close to something, when something put in a, uh, in, in a vacuum and it's just like, this is all of creation, you're really a part of something very close. And it tells you how connected, not just we are to everything that is out there, but how connected we really are to that same divine source, to Allah. And the root, as I mentioned, of this word contains the meanings of being strong, increasing in power, having influence, being sufficiently strong to being able to cope with something, but also to be denied, to be withheld, to intensify, to be mighty, but to be weak as well. And so the opposites of this name give it a sense of wholeness, give it that wholeness, and it gives us wholeness because Allah is Al Qawi, the mighty, the strong, the intense, the energetic, not the weak, you know, and 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 the uh, one who is uh, denied. But we see in our minds sometimes we associate that with Allah. Sometimes in our limited capacity, when we only see half of ourselves, when we only are half of our full potential, or even less than that, we see how we sometimes say, well, Allah doesn't like, you know, Allah is not able to do this, or Allah won't help me, Allah won't do these, we use a lot of negative language around Allah. And so we only activate just that part. But this feeling of opposites help gives us wholeness when we recognize, no, Allah is not just that we might deny 
we might bring about these negative attributes. We might lift these up above what really needs to be lifted up, but we are not doing it justice at all because Allah is actually the flip side and so much more. Al-Qawi as well is an inner strength. It's an inner strength that doesn't necessarily need to show itself on the outside. So this power and majesty and so much grandeur, it's an inner strength that's there. And so it helps us not to react to events when we internalize this name, when we process this name, not to just react to things or events on impulse, but to really become uh, aware and to really give us strength to not just resist, but to become aware and to become conscious. Because through this name, we don't only become more mindful, we become more aware of the divine firmness, the divine presence, how the divine's intense capacity, its power, and its force, how this all enables us to not just function, but how it allows us to then go and find comfort, how it allows us to go and fill the empty spaces in our hearts, fill the empty spaces in our communities, fill the empty spaces in our world. This name allows us that. And as humans, we're naturally, naturally a finite species. We're just objectively speaking, we're fairly weak in that sense. We're, we're, we're naturally weak. We, and not just in, our, in the physical sense, but in our emotional sense. We have a variety of different emotions. And sometimes we find ourselves influenced by various different things in our environments, influenced by very different things that go on in our minds and uh, in, in the realms of our mind, body, and soul. But this name shows us, and we were greatly influenced as well by Allah's strength, as well as uh, mercy. As, and so it tells us that not only do we, uh, do we need strength, we, we need that strength to keep going. And this name shows us that the source of our strength, the source of that energy, the source of that, uh, that impulsivity is, the, is, is Allah in mind, body, and soul. And so to feel Allah's omnipotence, to feel Allah's omnipotence in through this name helps bring about a feeling of humility, helps bring about a feeling of modesty. And it makes us feel humble, makes us feel modest. And through modesty, I'm not talking about clothing modesty or anything like that. I'm talking about a modesty of the heart, a modesty of the mind, a modesty of the soul in the sense that you're, you're humble before the creator, whatever that modesty looks like. That modesty brings about an excellence to our behavior, it helps soften our tongue to that which is around us, to those which is around us, and it helps bolster our character. It gives us, uh, a, this name gives us a capacity to, uh, be, to, to have the strength to endure, to carry burdens, inner and outer, and to strengthen our souls. And it gives us that strength to overcome our anger and other negative influences. It gives us that strength to transform. So with this name, we, we keep in mind how we can improve and how we can be so much better because our source of our strength is from Allah. Lastly, we cover Al-Mateen. Al-Mateen is the, the firm, the reliable, the solid, the steadfast, unshakable, and the resolute. And so it's similar to, in, uh, similar to the name Al-Qawi in that it contains this uh, meaning or the connotations of strength, intensity, power, with additional qualities of staying away from weakness and change. It has this root of being firm, being strong, being solid, being, uh, being fortified, consolidated, and being like a backbone. So it shows this firmness and intensity in distinguishing between things, be distinguishing in things that give us doubt, but in distinguishing things like truthfulness and falsehood, reality and non-reality. And it, it shows us, it emphasizes the need, the need to keep an unshakable stance in the face of constant temptations. When we incorporate this name that living on our principle, being consistent, this name helps lift it up because we have a consistent, firm and steadfast creator. And this name gives us spiritual strength, not just physical strength. Again, these names operate on many holistic levels. So it's not just the exterior, it's on the interior as well, that these, this name gives us that spiritual strength to stay on uh, the chosen path, to stay on a path to Allah, that wherever we might veer away here and there, that Allah is still that GPS that will keep us going, that will keep us uh, on, on our route. We might, we might get out here, but there will be rerouting messages after rerouting messages, after rerouting messages that, hey, turn this way, turn this way. We, we might not be in a position to go there because we think we found a better route. Or we think we went another way, whatever it might be. But this name re-emphasizes gently 
and sternly at the same time in, in, in putting these opposites together, how we, uh, we, we, we are given that spiritual strength and stability to stay on the same path. And so, as I mentioned, it grants stability, it grants steadfastness, it grants control of our thoughts and our deeds, and it helps us overcome the struggles and weaknesses as we go through life. It grants these things through this name, through this name that we, we get the strength to overcome the ego. We get the strength to purify the heart. We get the strength to overcome our lower impulses and ambitions in greed and in, in, in the distractions and weaknesses that arise. And it gives us that willpower and resoluteness. So it gives a lot of certainty, a lot of firmness. We, we're really establishing a firm set here. And so it helps also to serve. When I say it helps, it helps the, the name Al-Matin, the name Al-Matin and recognizing the divine name, incorporating it in our lives in, in recognizing it helps serve as a remedy to doubt, helps serve as a remedy to instability, to, to uncertainty, to all of these things. And it grants us strength in difficult times and when we are fearful. So we, we think about this name and not much more needs to be said about this name. You can get the point here, but in connecting back with the other names, we recognize that not only is Allah the steadfast, the, uh, the, the firm, the reliable, Allah is also the one whom we dispose our affairs to, the one who is al-wakil, the one who is our confidant, the one who is the protector, who's been authorized and deputized and is a, the disposer of our affairs, our trustee. And then in addition to that, Allah not only is advocating for us, Allah is al-qawi, Allah is mighty, Allah is strong, Allah is intense and in giving us strength. So not only representing us, advocating us, but shaking us and lifting us up, being like, hey, you, you can be better, you've got the strength for this and injecting that strength to us. And apart from that, being steadfast, being consistent. And so holding us holding us in place, helping us to, to have a shoulder to lean on when we need to, but reminding us that, hey, here's your foundation, go take the world, go do what you gotta do, go make the world a better place, whatever it might be. But you see how this name is like a loving advocate, someone who will root for you, someone who will stand up for you, someone who will console you, someone who will uplift you, give you strength, but then someone who will be that shoulder you need to lean on, someone who will help you walk again, someone who will be steadfast with you and be firm with you. So inshallah, we lift these names up as we as we close out today and we do our dhikr. But just keep these names in mind that Allah is nearer to us than our jugular vein. It sounds nice. It's a beautiful verse. But what does it really mean? What does it really mean in light of these names and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really is the one whom we put all of our trust in and whom we lean on? So we close with that. Inshallah, we'll be, begin our dhikr here. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Wakil, 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 La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Qawi, 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 Al-Qawi. Al-Qawi, 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 Al-Qawi. Ya Qawi, 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 Ya Qawi. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. 
المتين 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 يا متين 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 so Brothers and sisters, as you uh, go out today, inshallah, keep these names in mind. Keep these names in mind that you are going through whatever it may be in life, in positive, in negative, wherever it may be, that you have a God that can be a disposer of affairs, that you can trust. Not only a God you can trust, a God you can uh, who will be there to give you strength in those times of weakness, in those times of success, but also a God that is firm, steadfast, and always there for you. So inshallah, go in peace, and we'll see you all tomorrow, same time. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.